And this story from over the weekend. As you've been hearing, furious viewers have complained to Ofcom after a Bridgerton star, one of the actresses in the programme, made controversial remarks on the royal family's coronation balcony appearance. Take a look at this gone from the uh, the uh, the rich diversity of the abbey to a terribly white balcony i'm very <laughs> struck by yes. that i'm also looking at those younger generations and thinking uh what are the nuances that they will inhabit as they grow in other words, of uh, Joa and Doe has now been heavily criticised for making those comments about the royals while she was commentating for ITV at the weekend. The Netflix star, who plays Lady Danbury in Bridgerton, has now apologised for upsetting anyone offended. Comments on social media have dubbed her statement ridiculous and appalling. Uh, Morris McLeod, anti-racism activist and social commentator, often helps us out on these kind of stories. Morris, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ian. How are you? I'm good, thank you. She says ridiculous and appalling, um, or commentators on social media have said ridiculous and appalling. She says she's sorry for upsetting anybody offended. But this was cast iron, unequivocal racism right there, right? Um, I think, I mean, I, you know, I can't speak for, for her. I think everyone should answer for themselves. Uh, she apologised for what she said. I think she was clumsy, from what I understand. Her point was the, the, the celebration at the Abbey was 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 really diverse and they sort of went out of their way to show all sorts of different cultures and and what have you and then that was contrasted with this shot of the balcony the iconic shot of the balcony which let's face it is a family photo um and because the actual family itself has no diversity that that was start i think her the way she said it to say terribly uh why is 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 hmm. is at least clumsy and and that's why she's apologized but there's no i mean there's no reason why there should be any diversity is there i mean most families whether they're black or white or brown i would say the vast majority uh don't have diversity it's not a criminal offense to not have married into another color or culture is it no of course it's not um i i think i'd probably challenge you on that one mate ian i think most extended families in modern britain now do have some diversity i don't i don't think it's true that 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 you know um that homogenous uh, view that you got of the balcony is actually quite very representative of modern Britain. The, the family had the opportunity not to quite look like that, but they 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 failed to. Well, the, yeah, the person decided to leg it. I mean, we know that, don't we? She she disappeared. They, they, to, failed, they failed to protect her to, a, to yeah. a richer a richer more private life, I suppose. If Netflix and Oprah constitute as privacy these days, but that's a whole other story. I mean, I would I would actually contest that point though, Morris. I mean, I think you know there are clearly some people who've got mixed race. Uh, families and extended families, but I think that the majority of Brits look like that balcony, right? I mean, without the crowns, obviously. Um, that, I, it's it's debatable. I guess that my guess my point is um, a bigger point. I'd I'd like to make is that if you all sort of look into the royal family, which is this symbol of the British establishment and history and all that, if you're looking uh, to them to be to lead the vanguard against anti-racism, you're looking in the wrong place anyway. So. I think it's kind of a mute point, really, going, oh, look, everyone in the royal family's white. Yeah, go figure. A, a lot of them are related to, you know, they're... they're but that they're, is, like, even what you're um, saying there, Morris, sounds as if you, you kind of have a bit of a problem with that. I don't have a, have a problem with the royal family being white. Yeah. Uh, of course not. That's who they are. Why? Yeah. I um, mean, much in the same way as, you know, the Obamas, we never thought they were terribly black or weirdly black, whatever it was, when they were standing there in the Oval Office. I think if you showed the extended Obama family, uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama's uh, mother was white, wasn't she? So so there would be diversity. I think I think you're, you're actually proving my point that most modern families do have diversity. Yeah. It's, it's quite rare. The royal family is actually quite rare in that it's... Uh, unfortunately, it's removed the bit of diversity that it had. I didn't know Barack Obama's mother was white. I, there's a whole history education here, Morris. That, uh, I, guess, I, mean, I, could, I could be wrong. No, I, I stand to be corrected. But, but either way, I mean, the point is, you know, there are some mixed-race families, there are some non-mixed-race families, whether they're black, white or brown, and that's just the way it is. What was interesting about this is that it kind of got a bit of a free pass, didn't it? She made this comment and obviously lots of people on the panel that were sitting there in the studio absolutely scared witless to, you know, disagree with a black woman making a comment about diversity decided to almost agree with her. They were sort of nodding sagely along. Oh yes, absolutely right. You're terrible. 
I, th I think there's probably a point you're, that, that you're making that it is right, that there is a fear to discuss these issues. Um, people are very nervous. People don't really know what to say. They uh, And so most times people keep quiet. Um, to say that there was no reaction isn't quite true. There's, as you pointed out in the start of this piece, there's been a huge reaction against her, and that's why she's very publicly and quickly come out and, and apologised. Yeah. I mean, she says she's apologised for upsetting anyone offended. I mean, shouldn't that be everyone, really? Because, I mean, I don't know... Offence is a curious thing, but, I mean, it was just uh, intellectually and uh, morally and spiritually and academically and all of those words. It was just a, a, a sloppy thing to say and a, a daft thing to say, wasn't it? And, you know, to use the parlance of the day, a racist thing to say. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'd have to dig deeper into see, to see whether it's a racist thing to say. I do think it was... I mean, if somebody was watching the, the, the service, for example, I watched the service, you couldn't have missed the diversity within it. Um, you know, and it, 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 some, somebody put on social media, it's like a Motown gig going on over there at the Abbey. And I was trying to work out, in this strange world we live in, whether that was offensive or not offensive, or whether somebody was just explaining that they thought it was amazing that, you know, this would never have looked like that in 1952. Certainly, it might not have looked like that in 2002. But it certainly did this time around, and you're absolutely right. Somebody had worked very, very hard to, to create this. But I'm sure somebody out there on social media crunched the numbers and said, hang on a second, there were 12% of the performers in that abbey were, were black. And we don't have 12% of black people in the country. Somebody might make that point. Would that have made them a racist if they had? Um, it would have been a strange thing to... I th I think it might have been factually true, is all I'm saying. Is, sure, but but, but if somebody had made that comment, I can see you and I would be having a very different conversation today. You'd be saying, well, that's a terribly racist thing to say. So what we if there's more black people? We might well be. I mean, I think context... context matters and we matter who said it and why and what what point they were trying to make and etc cetera, etc cetera. but i think this shows up the fallacy of of sort of tick box diversity it's not you know the the, the idea that someone would count through the number of faces in the uh, you know that were involved and go oh that's 2.7 percent in the countries that's not how you do inclusion that's not how you know, and to even try and do it like that you, you end up with nonsense you end up with photo opportunities not equal opportunities Perfect. so Let's not go that way. All right, Morris, thank you. Morris McLeod, anti-racism activist and social commentator. Um, I can't run away from this. This was a racist comment, OK? I have done more phone-ins. I've been on more TV debates uh, all over the place over the years on these kind of issues about what constitutes racism. And I'm told that I need re-educating because every time I think somebody might have... And this is the thing. There is a difference between... I don't think that Anjoa Ando is a racist. No more than I would think anyone else. And we've se we saw this with... Oh, there's some classic um, examples of... Who was the Home Secretary? Amber Rudd, who... Do you remember she used the word coloured at one point? Very, very accidentally. And it was kind of linguistically... There was a kind of linguistic psychology in what happened. She wasn't using that word because that's the word she would normally use to describe non-white people. It just followed the flow of some conversation. Anyway, so this word was used. And at the time, I can remember the good and the great. And Amber Rudd, who's about as right-wing as you know, Ken Livingston on a good day, uh, she was widely condemned for this, and she was called a racist. Not somebody who'd said something that might be construed as a bit racist, which is a whole different thing from somebody who is a racist, is a racist, active, ongoing, a continuum of racism. That's who you are, part of your... Do you define yourself? You know, if you thought you could get away with it, you'd stick it on your CV. I mean, really? But that's the world I'm told we live in now, that we've, re, we've changed the way we see racism. And because it's so bad, nobody disputes the, the horrors of that. But it's right that when somebody steps over a line, accidental or otherwise, we call it out as racism. We don't try and sugar the pill. We don't try and dilute it in some kind of way. OK, well, based on that, 
this is racist, right? Based literally on the criteria that I've been told you have to adopt at times like this, then calling a white family standing on a balcony terribly white is kind of, you know, you wouldn't, there's no magistrate in the land that would go, they go, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Miss Andoa, uh, um, you know, you've got, I love your TV program, but that comment was racist. It's that, right? There's no, no way around it. Even if it was an error, it has to be called out, surely.